Honesty. What a beautiful word. Join me in prayer as we go into our worship or continue our worship through understanding time here at Elevating Life Church. Lord, we praise you for your complete honesty in the state of being whole and undivided. We ask for mercy this morning as we seek to cultivate a character that reflects your integrity in everything that we do. We now intentionally, thoughtfully, and with a kind and curious attitude, lean into your truth to be blessed through your wonderful ways. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to uh, our Palm uh, Sunday service here. Uh, we are excited today because like any other day uh, for the Christian, the committed Christian, uh, we give tr uh, tribute uh, to the one who devote, who we, I saw Josh counting, he kind of threw me off back there, the one who uh, we devote our life through, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Now, let, let me once again uh, welcome you to our, our eclectic service. I like what John said earlier. He, he uses this worship experience, and that is such a better word than what I'm using. And so welcome to our worship experience here. Uh, we call it that eclectic time together, a service where we truly hope we'll meet your worship style because we do care about you as an individual, uh, but also we want to meet your spiritual need. And we all have spiritual needs, don't we? And we want this to be that time that we can meet uh, your need uh, through the honesty and the integrity of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're new here, I do see, uh, let's see, do I have anybody new here? Looks like everybody's right there. Jess is new in attitude. And so, <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you are new here, we, we do, uh, uh, we thank you for being our guest this morning. And, and our prayer, of course, for everyone uh, is that you will experience God's very best goodness while you're with us. And we hope that's your experience throughout the entire week, too. Uh, let me just do this this morning. Let me just, since we have everybody here, nobody's really, we don't have any new guests here. Hey, let me just uh, give you a special thank you because I think we all understand this doesn't happen because of one person or another person person. It happens collectively together. So thank you for that. And thank you for being here and truly investing your time. And I know this, your money uh, to this ministry to truly create this movement. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we truly appreciate it. I truly appreciate it. Now today to begin our message though, let's, uh, let's jump into the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10 verses uh, eight and nine to begin the message. And this is kind of unusual. I understand that for Palm Sunday, but you'll see uh, where I'm coming from in a moment. So again, Proverbs 10, eight through nine. Now, as you're turning there, let me turn to our Facebook audience. And as always, we're absolutely thrilled you're able to leverage the technology and be with us. We do ask, as we do every week, just to click on that share button to be part of our outreach ministry so that uh, you can let other people know about the uh, Palm Sunday service here, our worship experience uh, together. Uh, just let other people know. Thank you again for connecting with us. Isn't that what it's about? Connecting, all right, and tuning in this morning. God bless you and uh, we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Holy Week. Now today, of course, represents the day Jesus in his earthly ministry, as I shared with the young people, as we read in all four Gospels. Uh, today represents the day that Jesus rode alone on a donkey, which, you know, is just, just, just crazy in my own imagination what that would look like. But he rode a donkey into the town of Jerusalem where a large crowd gathered and lay uh, uh, the palm branches, if you will, and their cloaks or their coats uh, across the ground to give Jesus royal treatment in their life. Are you with me? They gave, they, they, this represents that royal treatment that we need to give Jesus in our life. Where, and at this time in the Gospels, we see hundreds of people shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a remarkable scene that we read in all four of the Gospels, giving emphasis on how important this is in the Christian life, to truly give royal treatment to Jesus in our life. Now, 
On this symbolic, uh, on this symbolic day, Palm Sunday, uh, it does usher in Holy Week. And with that, uh, we continue with our year-long series, Life Rock On, Living in Faith Every Day. That's the Christian faith. Every day, standing on the greatness of God, the rock. So life, rock on, is our theme for the entire year. Now, we've been using classic rock songs. Uh, up to this point, like Dream On from Aerosmith, Hot Blooded, uh, uh, the song uh, we used a couple of weeks ago, Like a Rock from Bob Seger, to set some powerful themes to uncover biblical truths. Okay, hear that this morning. Biblical truths that we can accept and hear this apply in our hearts to live a life of integrity through faith. This morning, it's no different. We continue our year-long series with the classic rock song, the one we just heard uh, John share with us, the classic rock song in our message today, Honesty. So with that, read with me Proverbs 10, 8 and 9. Here, the sage, the wise person. Let me ask this question. Who here would like to be a wise person? Okay. Some of you guys are wise. I won't finish that. Of course, we want to be uh, a person of insight. That's, that's what a, a wisdom is. And here the, the sage, the wise person says this, the wise in heart. Heart is that implicit memory that sits in your mind, in your brain, in your heart. Think about riding a bike. We all had to make a decision we're going to ride a bike make the decision to get on that dangerous, fearful obstacle with two wheels. And we had to learn. We had to get it into our memory. And we had to practice it. And we had to learn it. And we had to learn it some more. And we had to fall down some more. And we had to have Papa go and kiss, sorry, that's another, <laughs> kiss their knees. But what happens when you practice it, and you practice it, and you fall down, you forgive yourself, you get back up, you get back down? It gets into your heart, because if I would challenge most today that know how to ride a bike, yes, it might be a little fearful at first, but you can quickly figure it out because it's in your heart. Love God with all of your heart. Wise in heart, accept these commands, the commands of God. We read in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's wonderful. You can read all 49 or 50 commands of Jesus all in the Old Testament because all Jesus did was, he says, let me bring the truth back. And through the four Gospels, he presents all life principles once again, both in the Old and the New Testament. So we can say here, the commands of God, the commands of Jesus. But listen to what it says. But a chattering fool. Yep, 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 yep. Somebody who, when you sit down with them, you're like, can you give me the commands of Christ? No, but you know this is how I live my life. Yep, 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 yep. And they give their opinion about how to live life through their tradition, through their history, through their experience. And they can have one iota of a conversation with you to share this is the principle, this is the values of the Christian faith. These are the commands of Jesus. They just chatter away and don't talk about anything. I think about groups of people throughout the week in our own community that just yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. They, they have no clue, even though they think they're wise. But a chattering fool comes to ruin. Now listen to this. This is our core verse today. Whoever walks in integrity, in the integrities of those commands, not your uttering, you know. Whenever, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. What does that mean? Your self-image. You walk securely in who you are in Christ, your self-image. That's your self-esteem. That's your self-respect. That's your self-confidence. Who's with me? You see, when people are walking around and, and they're in this state, 
We know that there's a problem because they're not securely walking in these commands. Not their fault. They're trying to figure it out. That's where the church comes in, right? Whoever walks in integrity walks securely. That should be powerful. But whoever takes crooked paths, I do what I want. I told you I get it in every service. That's my goal. Really, I'll do what I want. I, don't, I really don't care. I don't put effort. I don't care what you think. It just doesn't work. But whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. This morning, the focus, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. The song uh, this morning, the message, to set the theme for Palm Sunday, is honesty. Which, by the way, that's awesome, by the way. Which, by the way, is the foundation of integrity. And the song Honesty, of course, is written and performed by Billy Joel. Uh, anybody know when it was released? Back Way back when? In 1979. 40 years ago now. And so it's been a few years. How many of you guys are familiar? Like this song. It's a beautiful song. I enjoy it. Now, at this point, though, you might be asking yourself, what does Billy Joel and the song Honesty have to do with Palm Sunday? I'm so glad you asked there, John. I do appreciate that. I heard your thoughts. You're thinking about it too, Matt, aren't you? Okay. Know that Palm Sunday, as I shared already, is a time when we remember when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and the crowds went wild. Everybody go wild. There you go. Laying these palm branches or these leaves in their uh, coats or their clothes on the ground to offer, again, royal treatment to the king of kings. Now the question is, what does Billy Joel and all this have to do with all of this? Well, likewise, that's a fun word for a preacher to say. Likewise, today, this scene would be much like a rock concert. Let's say we're Billy Joel is performing the song Honesty, and the crowds are going wild. Laying, let's say, roses and daisies at his feet up on the stage, throwing articles of, let's say, clothing up on the stage to offer grand treatment to the king of country rock ballads. Very similar in nature, but very different in meaning, yes? We all know this, no matter the day or age, people can lose themselves in a moment, uh, uh, they can lose themselves in a moment in the presence of great talent, let's say, uh, wonderful skills and charisma. And people, these people are thrilled because they encounter greatness and goodness in a moment of time. The difference in meaning, though, is Billy, Billy Joel's greatness and goodness is temporary. Both temporary in satisfaction and in experience. Who's with me? Jesus, on the other hand, is eternal in satisfaction and in experience. Now, when thinking of these two experiences... Which one makes more sense when it comes to prioritizing your well-being, your integrity, your contentment towards a life well lived? Chasing after temporary things or living, let's say, moment by moment uh, in the internal blessings, if you will, of the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Which one makes more sense? And our goal as Christ followers ought to be to live honestly in the one who rode the donkey into Jerusalem so many years ago, where the people shouted, Blessed is the name who comes in the name of the Lord. Folks, we need to be honest in our faith where we can be an expression of what true honesty is through Christ. So uh, let me say this, an, uh, an incomplete and divided world can experience the integrity of goodness through the Christian faith. Who's with me? 
Folks, we got to think about this. Honesty is the solution to brokenness. Okay, I want you to think about that. It is the solution. Yes? You with me? I think we all understand like Billy Joel's expression in, in his song and Jesus riding alone on a lonely donkey. Honesty truly is a lonely word in our day and age. And the biggest mistakes, folks, that we make when it comes to understanding this honesty we're, we're seeking is attempting to seek it or understand it in the brokenness of man's relationship rather than in a pure, honest relationship with God. It's a big mistake we make. So with that, let's just take a few moments to understand honesty or the integrity uh, I, I referred to in this goodness of Christ. Let's just take a few moments when it comes to the kingdom of God. Honesty truly is a treasure from God and can only be understood, listen to this, through the goodness of Christ. It is only through belief, repentance, and seeking after God's honesty can anyone know and experience it to its fullest, to its fullest potential through the integrity of Christ's ways. We've got to get those ways into our hearts, do we not? As shared over this year-long series, I've mentioned the goodness of Christ many times and the different elements or dimensions of this goodness. And I believe by now, uh, most of us know, if you've been here uh, consistently, that there are three dimensions to God's goodness. And, it is, it, and they are this, moral purity which is the holiness I referred to last week in the message, Holy Diver. Another dimension of His goodness is love. And then we have the dimension we're talking about today, integrity. And it is this third dimension, integrity, where true honesty dwells in your life. Without honesty, folks, it is impossible to have Integrity as a human being, as a person. Not only in your life, but especially in your faith. And again, just as I shared last week, your integrity, along with your love and your purity, is in your control. Nobody can control it but you. You can't control the greatness that God put in you, but God says, you will, don't worry, up here. Thank you for being here. If you do not control your own goodness, that means you make a decision to make your life good, you'll miss honesty altogether. Again, only you can cult cultivate honesty to strengthen your integrity or the structure of who you are in Christ. Now the wonderful thing about integrity and this honesty we speak of is it completely relates to the matter of truth in your life. Not somebody else's life, your life. That reflects that integrity. And let me share the three measurements of honesty. With you, we have three dimensions of God's goodness again, purity, love, and integrity. But there's three measurements of honesty, and those are these three things. Are you ready for them? Gener uh, excuse me, genuineness, ferocity, reliability, and faithfulness. Can I have some, one of our ushers or somebody help this gentleman here? We're losing track here. Thank you. I, gotta, I don't want you to lose this message this morning because just a little bit of distraction. So again, let me, let me back up a little bit to make sure that we have your focus. 
And no, there are three measurements of honesty. Here they are again. They are generosity, your reliability, or what is known as veracity, and faithfulness. Let me just talk a little bit. We just have a few moments here, but let me talk a little bit about each measurement of this truth or this honesty that represents your integrity. So I want you to really examine yourself as we go through these uh, three different measurements. Number one, genu- uh, genuineness. Understand the basic element of who you are in Christ is being true, and being true is what is referred to as being real. Number one, you have to be real in your life. You have to be genuine. You have to be authentic. You see, the first measurement is genuineness, and that's being true to self and others. Your genuineness is uh, the base, again, of your integrity, and genuineness is being true to God's strengths. That's his qualities. That's your, uh, uh, the, uh, his uh traits that he designed in you. You have been created in the image of God. And to be genuine, you must cultivate these traits so that you can reflect the realness or that genuineness of the Christian faith. Are you with me? John 17, 3 uh, shares this thought here. Now, this is eternal life. Here's the question, or here's the uh, answer to the question so many people ask. What's the meaning of life for the Christian? It's John 17, 3. Now, this is eternal life that they know you. Speaking of God the Father, those traits in you and in other people, the only true God and Jesus Christ. That's the goodness of life. That's the character of Christ. That's you building your structure and your integrity through Christ whom you have set. This is answering the question, what is the meaning of life? I would write this down. I would memorize this because everybody who comes into my counseling, my coaching office, this is one question they always ask, what is the meaning of life? Boom, just answer the question. You're welcome. Now, child of God, let me talk to you. God is real. He's not fabricated or constructed or fake. And the greatness of God are the strengths he made in you. And it is your responsibility, your sacred duty to be true, to do all you can to cultivate and develop these God strengths from within you so that you can reflect the honesty of Jesus Christ in this world. Genuineness is being real. And it is the first measurement of your integrity in your faith. Being true, not in your flaws, folks, but in the strengths God has given you to carry out your purpose. And what I mean by this is the same uh, issue I had when I first became a Christian is so many people justify their anger, their their, uh, discontentment, discontentment, excuse me, I can get it. And what they do is like, well, if you don't like the way God made me, and in your anger, in your hate, in your bitterness, you're expressing yourself and you're blaming God for your issues. Is this happening? Almost in every church you go in, you can find people that don't understand love. They understand bitterness, resentment, putting up those those fists when things aren't going based on their preferences, their tradition, their history. Oh, we got to get out of that world. We are not being true in our flaws, folks. We're being true in our faith through those strengths that God has given us to carry out our purpose. Genuineness is the basic, of, uh, the basic element of your integrity. Honestly, it really is. Another measurement is your reliability. Your reliability to the faith, or what is known as veracity. I'm going to go over a little bit. I, uh, do I have your permission to do that? Uh, thank you. I, I noticed the clock, but I, I really need to get this, the next two out to, to really make sure that this is complete. Integrity. Another measurement in, uh, is your uh, reliability, or what is our reliability, reliability, or what is known as veracity. Okay, Deuteronomy 25, 13 
shares some very interesting words for the Christian. Do not have two differing weights in your bag, one heavy, one light. Now this is just an odd verse. Do not have two differing weights in your bag, one heavy and one light. Veracity or the reliability of who you are, your structure, is about telling the truth. Where genuineness is about being true, your veracity, your reliability is about telling the truth and not having two differing weights, if you will, or testimonies or stories of who you are. Your testimony, your testimony or the weight of who you are should be the same on Sunday as it is for the rest of the week. And our words and our expression should be consistent. That's the constancy of God always. And many Christians have differing weights about who they are. And folks, I hope we all know that God wants us to represent things the way they really are. What they really are from, let me add to what I said already earlier, to what they really are from a heart of honesty and love, not out of a heart of deceitfulness and anger and resentment. Who's with me? I'm speaking both in word and expression or tone. Some of you need to work on that. Because we are responsible for that sacred duty, are we not? Our responsibility is to tell the truth with the to- uh, tone of a, uh, adoration, let's say, respect and understanding for the other. Not out of a heart, again, of resentment, hate, or bitterness. Again, when we are telling our truth, let's do all we can to allow our yes to be yes, our no to be no, but with an attitude of kindness, kindness to self, kindness to others, with a kindness or an attitude also of curiosity and understanding for the one who is receiving the message. Telling the truth both in word and in deed. That's expression. Your veracity or your reliability is the second measurement of God's truthfulness or honesty in who you are in Christ. The last measurement I'll share and then I'll shut up. The last measurement of the truth or honesty, of this integrity, I'll share is this. And this is so important, is faithfulness. Faithfulness is what closes the loop of your integrity through Christ. And it's this. It is proving yourself to be true and honest. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says this. God is faithful. You, by whom you were called unto the fellowship. That's the fellowship of goodness, folks, of this life, of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Understand this, God is faithful. And just as God is faithful, we should be faithful. Yes? But let me ask you this, what is faithfulness? What is it? Well, thinking about it, if God, God's genuineness, if you will, is a matter of being true, and reliability is a staple of telling the truth, then as I shared already, faithfulness has to mean proving to be true. So let me ask you, can you prove to be true in the face of the reality of your faith? I say reality because so many people have these illusion of what Christian faith is. You're missing the mark in that illusion. It's not a value base. It is a faith of integrity. Can you prove your faith? So in other words, if this was a courtroom and you were standing up here and you were the guilty, would you be guilty of being faithful in your faith? And could you prove it? Could you prove it without a shadow of doubt to show your integrity of the Christian faith to uh, uh, the Christian faith that you claim to be a part of. Can you prove your faithfulness in the reality, not in the illusion of your tradition, experience, or history? What is your proof? Is it meekness? Where anger is under God's influence rather than under your instinctual foolishness? 
Maybe your proof is humility. Meaning your life shows that your highest value is not being right to your spouse or to your family, to your church, to whoever. That's not your highest value. But your highest value is understanding life together through the power of love with God and your neighbor. Maybe your proof is generosity. I don't know what it is. Do you know generosity is proof of repentance and a change of heart? A change heart from man's self-centered ways to being God-centered in every dimension of your life. Generosity is being detached from the priorities of man's ways, such as wealth and power and popularity and status, and attached to God's priorities so that you can give away generously God's truth, beauty, goodness, and unity. Generosity is nothing more than detaching yourself. I love people that say, oh, generosity is a sacrifice. No, it's not. It has nothing to do with a sacrifice. It has to do with detaching yourself from the things of this world and allowing the commands and principles of God to shape your life, to get them into your heart so that it will shape your life so that you can live in the generosity of God's ways. What is your proof this morning? Faithfulness is proving yourself to be true in Christ's commands. Today, again, our song in the message is holiness. And when thinking about honesty, it has everything to do with Palm Sunday. If it were not for the honesty of Jesus Christ, his integrity, riding alone on a donkey, where the crowds were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, then all of this is done in vain. But anyone who honestly lives in the generosity, excuse me, in the genuineness, reliability, and faithfulness of God knows and understands the words that were shouted so many years ago. Blessed is he who comes in the name of of the Lord. Won't you this morning, on this Palm Sunday, won't you make the choice to be honest in your faith and truly live in the contentment of integrity? The message this morning, honesty.